Matt Gonzalez, Jose Garcia Zarate's defense attorney. Matt, good evening. Good to have you with us uh, tonight. Th those were strong words from me. Tony Serra, um, who's going to take it from here on the federal case. Do you agree with him? Well, it's not really a question for me to answer. Uh, the question of whether or not it's a vindictive prosecution is one Tony will make in court, and he's uh, committed to fighting the case as strong as he can. So, I, I mean, I, I don't understand what he is arguing. I mean, the Steinle family has every right to want to see this through to its federal uh, fruition, and the federal court certainly has every right to continue to, to follow through on these charges, do they not? Well, I think the point that Tony is trying to make, uh, and it's appropriate for federal court, is that uh, typically the federal government doesn't get involved in a case like this. This is somebody with no weapons possession history. Um, you know, he's not a member of a gang. He doesn't just. Well, he, he may, just he may not, not be, but he's, he's a five time, seven time convicted felon who's been deported five times. So clearly he has a prior history. Right, but it's not a serious history. Usually the feds get involved in prosecuting crimes that the state has already prosecuted. But if the state has failed to carry it's out its duty to protect matter. the citizens of the state uh, through their sanctuary status, obviously there's been a failure here. So when the state fails, the federal government has to step in to try to, you know, find a way to, to seek justice, no? Well, yeah, but I don't think you're, you're following what I'm saying. I'm okay. saying that typically... The federal government doesn't get involved in a case like this one. Obviously, they're very interested in Mr. Garcia Zarate, mm -hmm. but, but the allegation that Mr. Serra is making is that they're interested in him only because he beat the murder charges. And so the question is, is that something that they should be allowed to do? They would never have prosecuted this case. They had no indictment until he was acquitted of murder. Well, it, it, dual sovereignty doctrine allows for them to do this without there being any issue with double jeopardy. There's still a felon in possession of a firearm charge and an immigrant in possession of a firearm charge that they're pursuing. I, I want to play your co-counsel, Francisco Ugarte, but, who was another person but, but, but just who to, tried but to... But just to address that, Go ahead. Martha, just, just one second. All right, sure. The point isn't whether or not the federal government as a separate sovereign can prosecute someone. The answer is yes. But... The question is, what happens when they treat an individual completely different than they treat everybody else? And that's the point that Tony but is raising. But you're talking about their feeling towards this case. I'm talking about whether or not they have the right to pursue it. And you don't argue that they don't have the right to pursue it, correct? You're, you're saying that you don't like their feeling, that you believe it's vindictive or that they have some other kind of agenda. But I'm saying, obviously, they have the right to do what they're doing. Well, it, if it's a selective prosecution, if they never go after anybody for their very first gun possession case, that would be peculiar, and it would be something to try to highlight in the federal yeah, court. I, I hardly think that this is a case where this is a person who, you know, is uh, not someone who has dealt with the law. He's been, he's, he's a five time, seven time felon. He's been five times deported from this country. So, so to say that he's just sort of this, you know, innocent person who doesn't deserve this kind of scrutiny by the federal government, I think, is a bit of a stretch. Um, I, I do want to talk well, about I'm, the political nature of yeah. this. So let me move on. This is Francisco Ugarte, your co-counsel, talking about what he sees as, as a political agenda in this case. Let's play that. Okay. This case was used as a means to foment hate, to foment division, and to foment a program of mass deportation. It was used to catapult a presidency along that philosophy of hate of others. Do you believe that Mr. Zarate has a right to, had a right to be in this country? Well, I think the point that Francisco Garte was making was that this was a case that from the very outset was a ricochet. So the bullet struck very close to where Mr. Garcia Zarate was seated. We've never seen a murder case in San Francisco that was based on a ricochet. And so uh, it only came to the forefront because uh, our current president elected to use it in his campaign. I think that's the point he was trying no, to I make. I think the point that he was trying, I think the point that has been made about this case is that this is an innocent woman who was walking on a pier. How this did not turn out to be a manslaughter case is, is something that is a large question for anybody who observed it closely. Um, he picked up a gun, I, I an illegal firearm, totally as an immigrant. The gun went off, and Kate Steinle is dead because of it. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, the, the 
press the supposition I, I, that this I, is just, just sort of some sort part I of some will... sort of big anti-immigration agenda um, seems to belie no, the actual the, the... facts of what happened. There's no question Kate Steinle is innocent. I mean, this is a tragedy. We all wish it wouldn't have happened. But the question of somebody's immigration status, when the prosecution is trying to prove premeditated murder, in effect, the courts say somebody's immigration status isn't relevant to that determination, any more than an American citizen being charged in another country who, say, let's say, overstayed their visa. Uh, that that wouldn't be an issue. Overstaying a visa a is very different than being kicked out. He was supposed to be removed from the city of San Francisco, and that was completely overshadowed and overlooked. Uh, you know, he was not handled right, in a the, legal manner by by the state, city of San Francisco, or and, and he completely they, managed to fall through all the cracks five times after he was kicked out of the country. I can't even imagine how you would feel if that happened to someone that you loved, someone in your family. Let, let, let me just say this though. This isn't when we talk about Sanctuary City and what caused uh, Mr. Garcia Zarate to be released. It's not the city of San Francisco fighting ICE and Homeland Security that wanted to put a detainer on him. The federal courts have actually made it very clear that they want these federal agencies to have a probable cause determination that somebody is not a citizen and can be deported prior to allowing the agencies just to call up a city and say, hold this person for us. So it's really federal agencies refusing to follow federal courts in California, Nebraska, North Dakota, Utah, Rhode Island. Well, That's yeah, really I mean, what this, this is, is a, about. It, clearly a case of someone who fell through the cracks and, and managed to pull off a heinous, uh, a heinous release of this gun that ended in her death. Um, and I know that you, for you, Represented him to the best of your ability. Uh, now it goes on to the federal to the federal system, and we'll see what happens from there. Um, Mr. Gonzalez, thank you very much. Good to have you here tonight. All right, thank you.